So I think that we are kind of, uh, for people who don't know what Riot Girl was exactly, that it came from a college campus and that it was, we're like urban, you know, we, we, we're from a city, we, we weren't from a college um, atmosphere. So I think one could look at L7 and say, oh, total Riot Girl. Yeah. The hard thing was always press and always just sort of, you know, how a, from our perspective, a fun photo shoot turned into some kind of litmus test. Yeah. We had, we, I, I sat in <laughs> meetings back then, sat where people would actually say, actually say this. Well, we have too many women on the radio right now. Oh, seriously? Yeah. To my face and my manager. Like, we're gonna we're gonna hold this song back because there are too many women right now. Holy! And then listing. So and so's got a single. So and so da 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 da. And I would just be like, "What? The, are you? You're at, I was so stunned by the interaction itself. <laughs> just that someone would say those words wow. to, to me. And so our seven inch came out right when we played South by Southwest, okay. which was a pivotal moment for us and kind of a seminal show for us because every industry person was there. And at that moment, like at that juncture, um, it seemed like the whole industry descended on us and we, we ended up being courted by most, almost every major label mm -hmm. with our 7-inch, just on the, you know, on the virtues of our 7-inch. The record came out in September and we, we uh, went on tour with Hole and um, that was 94. As soon as things started to take off, uh, I think there was a resentment, a backlash. It was like people suggested that we were just some marketing ploy by, you know, major label by Geffen. Mm -hmm. um, we were like some fabricated, like Menudo type, Milli Vanilli <laughs> type, whatever. <laughs> They didn't, in Chicago in particular, they kind of eat their own. Like mm -hmm. when, when things get too big, um, it's not cool, it's not punk rock, we weren't indie enough, we were too melodic, um, we were, I, I don't know. We were too cute. We the radio changed. Like uh, everything now was like angry white boys with baseball caps backwards. It was huge and that's all that seemed to matter at the radio stations. I think there was a backlash and I'm not saying this because I'm bitter, it's just that there was this whole, like, you know, women in rock, and I'm constantly fielding these questions. What does it feel like to be a woman in rock? Lilith Fair, and yeah, girls club. And then, when it was time for the door to close, it was like, shvum. We put out uh, one EP and three full-length albums on Capitol. By the time we released our last album, it's called Electric Honey, it was in 1999. There had been it was sort of like a sea change in, in music at the time, and it was sort of like the post-Lilith Lilith Fair uh, backlash is how I look at it. So there was a time where you heard a lot of fem female uh, voices on the radio, and it became this time where it was this sort of got very macho, and it was and not, not only female voices, but then more funky stuff like Beck, you know, that all this stuff was getting pushed out and it became this sort of macho time. It was this like Limp Biscuit and corn and all this, kind of heavy shit and like like meathead shit. You know, all the radio stations are like, well, we're, we already have, we're already playing uh, Garbage, so we can't play Luscious Jackson. It was like that kind of thing. You know, we already have our late or our lady group or, or we're playing No Doubt, so we can't play you. It's like that kind of, that's how fucked up it was. But just to point out, after September 11th, they stopped playing non-conformist women on the radio. I mean, that's just a blanket rule of thumb. They stopped playing Anyone who was in sort of disagreement with the mainstream, they, we just were unable to get on the radio. And so that sort of put a, a full stop to all the alt girls of the 90s. The one major tour I did in the USA was uh, the greatest forgotten tour in the history of alternative music in the USA called the Cur Curiosa Tour. Robert Smith from The Cure hand-selected eight bands to go across Canada, uh, go across the US and Toronto and a couple like, just like the Lollapalooza, but it was 2004 and alternative music was officially not happening. Eight week tour across the US and not one music journalist other than the NME came to document that tour. 